Hey everyone, it's Kyle here with another C programming tutorial. In this week's video, we're going to be learning about math operations in C. Before we get into the tutorial, I want you to think all the way back to the origins of the computer. What was the original purpose of the computer? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you said calculating artillery trajectories for the military, you'd be absolutely correct. Uh, because a computer's first purpose was to do calculations. Any kind of calculation that would be outside of the realm of what you could expect a person to do. As a matter of fact, that's where the name computer comes from. Is a computer's ability to compute numbers. Do math, in other words. And that's what we're learning about today. Is how we can get C to do all kinds of mathematical computations. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about uh, first the C order of operations, which is how we do um, basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, exponents, and a, a few other operations. And then I'm going to show you some really cool math functions and um, just generally what you might end up using them for in your programs. So without further ado, let's do some math. With a fresh C file open, we can now start looking at some of the mathematical operations that are available to us. The first place that I want to start is with C's order of operations. Now C has a very specific hierarchy for the order in which any operations are executed and it's important for any C programmer to be aware of these because as you probably know the order in which mathematical operations or even logical operations are executed has a big impact on its outcome. In the standard mathematical order of operations, what's often known as PEMDAS in schools in the U.S. is also preserved within the larger hierarchy uh, of C. So the order of operations starts here from level 1 and works its way all the way up to level 14, which is the highest order, which are the last to be executed. And it also executes from left to right as it's written in the code phrase. Now, if you're writing really complex statements, I would recommend that you put in parentheses, uh, put parentheses around the things that you want to execute first, and even nest your parentheses to uh, make sure that the compiler is never going to make a mistake with the order that you want things to execute. So anyway, let's start talking about some of these operations. So level one operations are always the first to execute. Um, I'm going to start by defining some variables that'll just help us. Uh, so we have x and let's say we have a variable named y uh, so these are just variables that exist and I'll just use them symbolic uh, for um, demonstrating these operators so the first one is very simple it's your variable followed by two pluses so x plus plus and that's the end of the statement what this does is it simply increases x by one but there's an important distinction is that the value of x is not affected in this uh, current expression. So what that means is, for example, if I was to write the expression y equals x plus plus, right? What this is doing is it's setting y equal to the value of x and then increasing x by one after this phrase has executed. That's an important distinction. Uh, so it's it's setting the value of y equal to x and then increasing it, not setting the value to value of y equal to x plus one. Uh, similarly, we have um, much of the same operation, x minus minus, which does pretty much the same thing, is it subtracts the value of x by 1, but not in the current expression. So again, what we had before, where we have y equals x minus minus, is going to set the value of y equal to x, and then subtract 1 afterwards. So these are the two level 1 operations. In level 2, we have yet again... Uh, something similar to what we had in level one, where now we have plus plus and then your variable. What this does is, as you can probably guess, it increases the value of x in the current expression. So uh, a little bit different from what we had before. Now if you type this in, what this ends up doing is it increases x by one and then sets the, the value of y equal to that. So x is increased before the new value of y is defined. And in much the same way, again, we have minus minus x, uh, which decreases the value of x in the current expression. Next, we have a simple one that's just plus x. What this does is it basically acts as an absolute value. It always changes whatever the sign of x is, whether it's positive or negative, changes it to positive. So it acts like an absolute value. We also have uh, negative x, 
which simply negates the sine of x. So whatever it is, it flips it to the opposite. So if x was currently positive until it got to this expression, afterwards it would be negative. And if it was negative, then afterwards it would be positive. And then the final one here for level two is this, which is the exclamation point followed by your variable. This is actually a Boolean operator, which we'll talk about more in next week's tutorial. But what this one means is not x. So if x is true, then it's going to, re this expression returns the value false. It's a Boolean logic value. And if x was false, then this would re return true. So it just returns whatever the logical opposite value of x is in this expression. In level three, we get into more of our traditional uh, math operations that we're used to seeing um, in like math class and PEMDAS and whatnot. So we have, uh, we have x divided by b, um, x divided by y, sorry, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it just takes the value of x and divides by y. We also have x times y, um, also self-explanatory. Then we have x um, remainder y. So that's the remainder is operator is represented with the percent sign. Uh, so what this is is um, it uh, divides x by y, and then the result of the expression is not that numerical value, but it's actually the remainder. So for example, if I was to have 16 remainder 3, uh, and I was to evaluate this expression, the answer to that would be 1. The reason being is because 16 divides by 3 evenly 5 times, and that has 1 left over, and the percent sign uh, tells the compiler to return the remainder, which would be 1 in that case. That's all we have for level 3. And then level 4 is nice and easy, very simple. Uh, we have x plus y, uh, which is, again, very self-explanatory, and then x minus y. And that's all we have for level 4. Level 5 is where we start getting into what is known as bitwise operations and these operations instead of doing operations on decimal numbers like like we would do with um, just people calculations I guess for lack of a better word these do operations on the b binary numbers of uh, whatever numbers you're handling um, so if you recall from my tutorial one of my first tutorials on memory allocation earlier in the series I talked all about binary math and I showed you how decimal numbers are represented in binary by a computer. That would be helpful to review if you're a little rusty on that. Uh, but we have two operations in this level. So we have um, x and then the two sideways arrows to y. So this is a bitwise shift to the right. So what this is going to do is it's going to take all of the bits in x and shift them y number of places to the right. Um, so if you can imagine, if we had some binary number, right, 0110, um, and I say I want to do a bitwise shift of x, um, shift it one place over. What that means is now we filled in a 0 where the empty spot is, and we have 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and a 0 falls off of the end. Um, any, any numbers that fall off the end, like if a 0 or 1 falls off the end, it's just replaced by a 0. And this is mathematically equivalent to dividing the decimal value by 2 to the power of y, where y is, again, the number of places that you've assigned the bits to be displaced. So that's, that's a bitwise operation. It might be a little bit abstract if you're new to programming, uh, but it's definitely very useful if you're starting to get a little bit more experience in doing more advanced projects. And in much the same way, we have x with a bitwise shift y places to the left. And again, um, I won't explain it in full detail again, but this will take all of the bits of x and displace them y, y units to the left, so y bits to the left. Uh, and this is mathematically equivalent to multiplying of two, uh, multiplying by 2 to the power of y, where again, y is the number of bits that you're displacing. Um, and one important note is that uh, the only bit that's unchanged is the sign bit so any bits that fall off as they move to the left just get replaced with zeros except for the sign because it needs to preserve that sign bit in order to keep negative numbers negative and positive numbers positive after that we have we have levels 6 through 13 which we're actually going to skip for now because those are all boolean logic operations and I'm going to spend all of next week's tutorial talking about those and we're gonna skip right up to level 14 
uh, which is the highest level there is. And uh, here we just have um, a, a simple operation a equals b, which as you can probably guess that's just taking the value of a and reassigning it to the value of b. Uh, pretty easy. Next we have our iterated operations. These are really cool and I end up using a lot of these very often. So x plus equals y for example. This is equivalent to writing out the expression x equals x plus y. Um, and it's just programmer shorthand to make things a little bit more efficient because this is a lot nicer to look at than this and it's less keystrokes and it's easier to write. Quite frankly, programmers are quite lazy and we like to be as efficient as possible. Um, so again, like uh, this is like writing x equals x plus y, so it takes whatever the current value of x is and then adds y to it. This becomes really useful if you're doing calculus, especially for writing integrals, because this is basically how you would sum up, or summations, this is how you would sum up a whole bunch of values. Similarly, we have other uh, iterated uh, operations like x minus equals y. We also have x divided by equal, uh, equals y. And these are all, again, you follow the same format as this plus equals one. x multiplied equal y. And uh, we could just go through all of them. There's a few more. There's also one for bitwise shifts, for example. Um, uh, and it iterated for the bitwise shift left or bitwise shift right. And there's also even uh, one of these for exponents, which looks like that. And that's pretty much the end of all of the mathematical operations up to level 14. Now I want to take a look at some of the mathematical functions that you'll likely find useful while you're programming. These are all functions that are uh, native to C that C puts at our fingertips for us uh, to be able to use as part of our toolbox. This won't be an exhaustive list of all of the functions out there because there's quite a few of them and quite honestly Wikipedia probably does a better job of listing them all than I can and we'd be here a while. Uh, but I'm just going to show you some of the more useful ones that you'll end up using. So first we have absolute value uh, which does exactly what you think it is. It just turns whatever the number uh, you input to a positive value and we saw something similar before actually a slightly more elegant way to express this uh, but this one actually has an argument where you can do operations inside instead of the other one which can only handle a single variable. We also have the floor function which I find myself using quite a bit. Uh, what this does is if you're not familiar with the floor function is it rounds a uh, a number, a decimal number, so example 3.14 down to the nearest whole number. So 3.14 would get changed to 3. Similarly we also have the ceiling function which is um, works in sort of the same way except it rounds up to the nearest whole number. So 3.14 would always get rounded up to 4. And we also have the conventional round function, uh, always very useful. We have a bunch of trigonometric functions. So we have sine, cosine, uh, tangent, always lots of fun. Uh, and then we also have the arc function. So arc sine is denoted by simply putting an A in front of sine. Uh, arc cosine is uh, done by putting an A in front of the cosine. Um, and all of those trigonometric functions end up being very useful for a lot of stuff. Uh, we have exponents. Uh, which is exp. We also have logarithms. So just log on its own is the natural logarithm and then log with a 10 after it is the log with a, a base 10. Uh, we also have um, a, a pseudo random generator which is simply rand and in, in the argument there are ways to modify the range of pseudo random values that it outputs. Um, I just want to put a little asterisk next to this. This is not a true random um, number generator because you know technically speaking true random is, is a real debate over whether it really exists but a computer itself can't really generate true random values and I've gone over this if you were to use this over a long period of time uh, you would notice that the lower values in the range that you specify are going to be slightly slightly more frequent than higher values and that's just the nature of how computers generate these pseudo random values and that's why they're called pseudo random and the last one I want to show you is square root, which is just SQRT uh, as an abbreviation. 
and it'll take the square root of whatever's inside of this argument. And uh, yeah, I should have mentioned that before. These parentheses on the outside are what's called the argument of the function, and that's where you enter the uh, the the number that you want it to do the operation on. So for example, absolute value, and I can type negative five into its argument, and this would return positive five. For floor, I could type in uh, 2.718, right? Um, you know, random number I just had off the top of my head, and this would return a value of two, uh, and then 2.718 uh, would return a value of three in the ceiling function, uh, or you could do uh, any of these you just type in into the argument. You can also do operations within these arguments. So let's say, for example, I had um, two angles that I wanted to add up together, one of them called angle x, or let's call them angle theta, and I had another one that was angle phi, and I wanted the sum, uh, the sign of the sum of those two angles. You could notate it like this, where inside the argument you put theta plus phi, and the compiler will know to execute the addition of those two variables first, and then whatever the result of that addition is, then take the sign of that. So it's a nested operation automatically. And that's a pretty uh, awesome thing to keep in mind. And I also mentioned before, if you're starting to get into complex operations, um, you, you would want to use parentheses to denote that. So for example, if I wanted to make this uh, even more complex, if I wanted to divide the sum of theta plus phi by beta, you wouldn't do this uh, because in, according to order of operations it would divide phi by beta first and then add them together. Instead you'd want to put parentheses oops, sorry, you can put parentheses around uh, these two variables theta and phi so it knows to add those two first then divide by beta and then take the sign of that resulting angle and that's how you do more complicated nested operations and have them come out in the correct order so you don't get errors like that anyway this is all the cool math uh, that's available to us in C and you guys know how much I love math I get very excited about it um, but yeah uh, have fun with math Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.